Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks to join that uh, webinar with Bitside and Axelium. I propose that we wait uh, just a few minutes in order to get the, the remaining participant to join, and uh, we will start the, the session together. Uh, you will see it will be a very interesting subject today we will touch on. Two more minutes and we start. So just perhaps we, we start the formal presentation, just to make sure that you're familiar with the platform. So you have uh, the capability to ask questions. For that, you have a chat engine. Uh, so uh, I invite you to, uh, to put your question there, and uh, I will handle the question toward to Lenard during the presentation and at the end during the wrap up. So uh, don't be shy. Uh, it's uh, much more interesting when uh, uh, the session is interactive, uh, so um, let's shoot. So I suggest that we start uh, after the five conventional minutes. So hello, everybody. My name is Christophe Bianco. I'm the co-founder of Excelium, and I'm delighted today to uh, invite BitSide to this event in order to uh, to present the new partnership Excelium and Bitside have signed in order to bring to our customer new capability when it comes to cybersecurity. And uh, in the perspective of the current friend landscape, we have found that it's a quite convenient moment to touch on that point, which is the risk evaluation and storing capability when it comes to organization, but also to supplier, because the recent uh, uh, situation with the solar winds uh, attacks and all these kind of chain things just demonstrate that not only you need to be in control with your security, but you need also to take care about the supplier and the ecosystem around your organization. And uh, we can see that the creativity of the malicious guys can bring the corporation to a very bad situation uh, when it comes to uh, cyber. I think that in Europe, we didn't really feel the impact of uh, solar winds. But uh, talking to my colleague in the US, I can tell you that it's really a, a very impacting situation where they just discovered that they are very weak just because they are using a, a software which is quite uh, present on the, on the US ecosystem. So why we are doing such kind of uh, presentation and why BitSight? So far, the, the one who don't know who BitSight is, uh, Leonard will uh, present you a more deeper uh, the organization and the, the value. But um, le let me perhaps present you a, a single slide that can give you a real view of why scoring we think currently is becoming a, an arsenal you need to have in your organization when it comes to cyber. So scoring, it's like if you know Moody's or a company like that, they, they score instru a financial instrument in order to uh, to provide the single things, which is trust in the asset. And cyber uh, scoring is typically the same kind of things, you know. Or you can trust that the company is doing the job. Uh, we have seen that a lot of companies, despite they have a certification or agreement or label or whatever, they are exposed to cybersecurity. So the question is, 
or I can complement and get external information uh, from, for that company that will make me more confident in the level of trust I can give to that organization. So I, I tried by th that, that single, uh, uh, let's say, uh, design to show you the different interests. So whatever your public or private organization, um, scoring will help you several things. The first one is to have a view on your capability. So Lenart will present uh, you the, the way they score and the, the things like that. Sometimes we can discuss about the scoring, you know, what they are considering to give you a score, what they are not considering, because they are doing that um, from an external point of view. Do they have enough information? I would say at the end of the day, we don't care because the key point is, despite the, the formal number we, you have, the key question is what my peers in that domain or in that country or in that organization or in that industry got in terms of scoring. Because if I have 10 and my competitor got two, whatever we discuss, it seems that because we are evaluated using the same criteria, it seems that I'm better positioned than them. On the opposite side, if my peer got better or uh, bigger numbers, it seems that I have something to do. That's the first element. So knowing yourself, having a benchmark, but also it will give you the capability to assess your supply chain. What about the company you are working with? Do they suffer uh, a bad scoring? And, and uh, helping you to put the focus on which one I need to consider when it comes to risk evaluation for my supply chain. Because when we talk to customer, it's they are working and interacting with a lot of companies. So at the end of the day, it could be quite difficult to have a very strong view and clear view on all the counterparts you are working with. So you will need to select. And, and I think that scoring could be a, a way for helping you to make that assessment or to have an external view uh, of kind of uh, third party auditors, if I can tell them uh, or name them like that. And so it can, it can help you to several things. The first one, you have to understand that regulation, financial uh, law, uh, leasing company or company like that, start to have a look on that scoring, you know, not just your financial performance, but also your cyber posture. Investor, like for example, Excelium, we have equity partner or private equity in our, uh, in our company. For sure, they are interested to know what is the level of security of that company I'm investing in. Um, when, when you are talking to external cloud provider or SaaS provider, you are also interested to have a view where do they stand because they send me their report, they send me their uh, PCI DSS certification, they send me their ISO 21. But that's that was a picture at what moment in time. What does it mean when it comes to the day-to-day -day operation? Perhaps some of you have already subscribed to uh, cyber insurance. For example, in the Exilium case, we have subscribed to an IG cyber insurance. Uh, for sure, uh, being exposed like we are, uh, our insurer want to be re uh, assured, if I want to say that in that way, that we are doing the good job in order to secure our own assets before expecting that the cyber insurance could save us in case of. Having this kind of scoring helped me to have a pragmatic discussion with them saying, guys, this is what my scoring, this is the evolution of my scoring. So uh, you can see that we are taking the points at a serious level and we are trying to make it uh, uh, an affordable and uh, um, an important element of our strategy. And the last one is the way also to uh, to measure the uh, the performance of the cybersecurity investment you are doing in your company with an external neutral view. I will say that uh, that could make some time um, yourself in a challenging position because uh, someone has discovered something about you that perhaps you are not aware. That's why we are saying that it's better to know about yourself yourself than learning that from an external body. And this is the kind of things you can expect. Eh? Well, this is the scoring of uh, of Excelium. So it's, let's say, uh, nearly two years ago, that one. And I, I will probably should have shown you the, the trend. But just have a look on the quick uh, aspect on that. We are seeing that 
we have a scoring, which is in itself a number. But the good thing is that, uh, first, we are in the top 10 uh, posture of the of the industry. So it means we are quite not bad in cyber uh, compared to the, the sector, which is normal because we are a cyber player. But if you look the the trending, uh, my trending is going down. So it seems that we are missing things, you know. And when I ask to my team, oh yeah, that's true, we have that. Oh yeah, that's true, we have that. But with that scoring, it helped me to have a, a global view and an in, instant view, uh, and not being dependent on the criticality my tech guys put on some specific action. We saw that also we have a point of attention, which is the botnet aspect. Uh, so in our case, it's a little bit um, different because we are conducting botnet uh, activity in order to track the malicious guy. But that gives me a posture. And this kind of certificate, I can share it with my customer in order to show them that uh, uh, they can have a minimum trust with us uh, because we are uh, doing the job. And we don't be shy and we are not shy to share the the result of the job with them, showing that we are good things, but also showing that we have uh, room for improvement. Being a service provider and providing services to customer, I need also to align myself to some standards. And for people involved in governance aspects, you know that it's a tough job, consuming a lot of resources and costing a, a lot of money. So that's why we are also using this kind of uh, uh, scoring to, to show the alignment we have compared to standard uh, governance uh, framework. And, and uh, Lenart will go deeper on that. Um, it will also help me to go uh, region by region, country by country, in order to see from a global positioning of the Excelium group, um, where do we stand? Perhaps we are good in Luxembourg, but what about Belgium? What about Africa? So that's also a way for, uh, from a management point of view for me uh, to discuss with my risk guys and the CISO guys in order to uh, understand. And being the CEO in that case of Axelium, that's definitely a subject of discussion I would like to have with my uh, security guy, much more than discussing about the new firewall they want to deploy because I don't know uh, which, uh, which kind of... Um, uh, features or new features it's bringing to us. Um, so that, that's in a nutshell uh, why we were thinking that now this kind of capability, we need to propose that to our, our customer. And, and so uh, we announced in December the, the partnership with BitSide. We, were, we already have a long time relationship with them. What does it mean in practice? It means that our customer will be able to get access to the scoring, our SOC customer will get access to their scoring through the Excelium interface. But we would like also to go a little bit further to help you to uh, use that kind of uh, capability inside your organization and perhaps on board also the supply chain of yourself. And moving on and considering that if you look the evolution on the market, uh, cybersecurity threats or incident is now coming to the resilience capability of the organization. And when it comes to resilience, it means that finance is the key point. And so finance with the insurer, finance with the uh, corporation, finance with the investor or, or the uh, stakeholder, that's something you will have to consider. And, and that's information that uh, you will be requested to provide. And so for that, um, I will let uh, Lenart to uh, go a little bit uh, deeper on the um, uh, bit side offering and to give us a sense of feeling regarding uh, what does it mean, what it can it brings, the way it's working. And after the presentation, we will wrap up and uh, take the question and perhaps touch a little bit the solar winds aspect because uh, first the bit site have uh, published a, a quite interesting blog on that. But there is also tomorrow for people who wants to do uh, or to follow the, the, the story of that, uh, a webinar organized by BitSight on, on that particular point. Leonard, I propose that you uh, take over uh, and I will uh, look in detail the question in order to make sure that we are uh, providing answer to the people. Okay, uh, thank you, Christophe. And uh, we're uh, obviously very uh, happy with this uh, partnership. Um, 
So what I'll, I'll do today is um, explain a little bit how uh, how BitSide works, what is the offering, uh, what is the concept of a rating, and where does it uh, add value in your uh, security uh, program. So my name is Leonard Picard. I uh, am uh, responsible for Bendelex and the Nordics on of BitSide. Uh, I've been working for BitSide for uh, nearly uh, three years now. So let's uh, deep dive into uh, the world of, uh, of security ratings. Um, first of all, I, I'll explain to you what is uh, a, a security rating. And uh, be sure that whenever during these uh, 30 minutes that we, uh, or 45 minutes that we still have, when you have a question, please do not hesitate to uh, type it in because we will be uh, directly um, maybe answering that uh, when it uh, to this uh, conversation. So what does um, BitSide do? The BitSide does uh, translate com the complexity of, of cybersecurity performance into a single digit. So uh, an easy to understand rating. Um, with that rating, you can, you can do a lot. And I'll explain that uh, later on. But first of all, what is it that, um, that, that rating? So, it is a continuous measurement, daily updated, of an organization's cybersecurity performance, as can be observed from the outside of your network infrastructure. So you could also translate it into, this is a continuous criminal's eye view on your organization's IT infrastructure. So the objective there is that we deliver a, a objective, verifiable, data-driven measurement of your uh, organization security performance or your organization's security risk. Because when you look at that rating from, an, from the point of view of your client, you might be delivering a service that is integrated in their service and has, let's say, a very important function there. So it might be supporting one of their primary processes. So your client will be looking at your security rating as an indication of the risk of doing business with you as a company. So as said, these ratings are um, updated on a daily basis and based purely on actionable, verifiable data. Um, you're looking now at a slide that explains why this is even relevant. So why would be companies be looking at um, probably something that you already know, right? Because you as a organization know best about your security performance. So why would this be interesting? Um, why are, for instance, uh, let's say half of world's cyber insurance companies looking at bedside data when they're taking a decision on how to insure companies worldwide uh, and also managing their portfolios on, on risk. That is because there is actually a correlation that is proven by an independent external agency outside of bedside. So that agency has crunched the data on behalf of the cyber security vertical, and they have proven that there is a tangible correlation between the chance of your company or any company for that matter um, getting a data breach and uh, how the security rating of BitSide performs. So to make it more tangible, that translates into a company that has a rating higher than 700. Um, that company is five times less likely to experience a breach than a company with a rating below 400. Now, underneath this security rating, we, um, we have identified 23 areas of risk, um, what we call risk vectors. And the correlation uh, is uh, even there on that level also uh, present. So for instance, if your botnet grade is B or lower, you have twice the risk of getting a data breach. So this really allows you to invest or to look at your investment from a security performance and security investment perspective to 
let's say, have a different lens. We want to be able, as a company, to invest in certain programs and certain solutions. And now you have actually a view from the outside that helps you guide where you want to invest. But maybe even more interesting, that helps you also to measure afterwards with a, an independent um, indicator whether that investment has paid off. So um, another interesting new uh, development here is that not only cyber insurance companies or your clients are looking at a security rating, um, but also uh, investors are currently looking at it. Um, Christophe already touched on that a little bit. Very recently, we have um, kicked off a partnership with a German index provider. That index provider allows companies to invest in a benchmark of stock. So what they did was they selected in um, a back test um, outperformers with a very high security um, as, as delivered by BitSide. And then they said, okay, what if we would have selected within this benchmark those companies that already outperform at that time on the BitSide rating, and we just invest in those. So they measure the contrast between the benchmark itself and the companies outperforming on the BitSide rating. And then they see that that would have delivered a 7% higher yield with less volatility. So those are two things that are very interesting for investors. I'm not here to tell you that there is actually a causal relationship because we all know that uh, when you invest high in cybersecurity, that does not necessarily mean that the stock market will react to that. But what this actually means is that also now CFOs and investors will be interested in cybersecurity performance. And that is a trend that will never uh, again leave. So this is one of the ESG, environmental, social, and governance factors that will uh, be taken into consideration for companies uh, who are investing in other companies. So what kind of problems can we uh, tackle or can you as a uh, client of Excelium tackle with a security rating. So first of all, you could, let's say, um, look at your own rating and view this as a continuous mirror that allows you to verify the result of your security, the, the execution on your security controls. So how would a criminal, how would a hacker that is based outside of my company see the effect of all the investments on the inside that we do, on configuration of internet-facing assets, on uh, whether or not we are uh, uh, well uh, defended against malware. Uh, what are our uh, users doing? Are they able to download still malicious um, uh, software or illegal software packages and be able to, to install that? So those type of things we can see from the outside. We are continuously measuring that and translating that into the security. So that really allows you to compare your own company security performance to chosen peers. So you will be able to see how is that competitor that has probably or maybe the same infrastructure, that has the same budget. Maybe they have even the same amount of people in their security team. So it's a very relevant, how are they doing it? Are they outperforming on maybe certain topics? But you could also do that internally. So you could say, my that part of my company that is responsible for EMEA, I want to compare that team to a team that is based in uh, Southern America, or to make it closer to home, I want Luxembourg, my Luxembourg team, compare to the Belgium team. So it allows you to efficiently allocate resources to uh, address your cybersecurity risks. Also, it allows you to, to really take decisions at a much speedier than you, um, so at a much speedier rate than you were accustomed to earlier. So 
normally you get a questionnaire with a lot of um, text in it and answers. You might be looking at an ISO report. You might be um, wanting to do a pen test. Um, that is a lot of manual work. And we are not saying that you shouldn't do that, but with a security rating, when the answers to a questionnaire are really solid and a company might be having a medium impact on your organization, you, clients of us do take the, the attitude that they say, okay, when, when all of that is correct and the rating is above 700, then we take the decision to continue. And uh, for instance, for, for example, not do the on-site audit. So it allows you to get a very early indication of security performance and maybe also make that long list a little bit shorter in order to, um, to spend your resources more wisely. Um, also on third-party risk, we allow you to continuously monitor your complete supply chain on security risk. Um, we also allow you, for instance, in this Orion uh, SolarWinds case, which was, uh, by the way, much the same from that perspective as the Blue Keep Citrix um, case. So we allow you to filter down, so outside in search for particular high risk vulnerabilities in your complete supply chain. So instead of having to do the outreach to 100 of your suppliers, you can just single out based on the data that we provide uh, the ones that actually are still vulnerable, exposed on the internet, have certain open ports open that are connected to Bluekeep, for instance, and then reach out to them and 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 ask them, okay, what are you doing? Is this is this information correct? And if yes, can you maybe uh, remediate? And when you have remediated, can you explain to me why there is this difference between the answers to the questionnaires you've given? and what we are now currently seeing, and can you maybe improve your underlying processes? So when you apply security ratings to third-party risk, you will be able to collaborate with your vendors and together with them, make the whole chain stronger. That is, by the way, something that uh, the European regulators are uh, considering strongly um, to, uh, to, 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 for instance, uh, the finance, but also payment providers, but also service providers supporting that industry are looking to, um, to improve. Some other use cases are a critical national infrastructure. So a, um, a country will be able to, um, to monitor their critical national infrastructure to match vulnerabilities that they're seeing in their critical national in infrastructure with threat information and do their reach out in their advisories so much more concrete. So how do we actually do this? How do we create a rating? So remember, our aim is to create an independent indicator of security performance. So we use data that is externally visible. We sample, we continuously gather that information. We started with that seven and a half years ago. Um, and when we create a rating, we go to the public internet registry and we ask for the assets. So the IP ranges and the domains, and then we correlate those to the data that we have found we filter and process that into 23 risk factors, and then we calculate the rating. So those are three level, levels of information that we provide. The, the rating, which is on the right column, then we have the 23 risk factors that are interesting for risk managers, but also for CISOs and for IT security professionals. And then we have the actual underlying data that we provide, and that is uh, visualized in this slide, and that is why the platform is now being adopted by, by over 2,000 uh, of our clients. It really allows three levels of the organization. So the executive level um, that is able to understand a rating, also the executive level that do not have the portfolio of IT or IT security, um, because a rating is so intuitively 
easy to understand. And then it, it, it connects that level to the level below, the, the level two here, that is able to understand these thematic views, so the, the 23 risk factors. They are able to, to, uh, to steer on maybe um, botnet infections or maybe email uh, security. They are able to say, okay, th this is something that compared to the industry, we are much stronger in, so we can uh, stop focusing on that. And we should focus on, for instance, um, cryptographic um, defects of our, um, of our internet facing assets. And then that level also is connected to the underlying data where the IT security people that actually need to do the work in, in defense of your organization, they also accept this, let's say, this security rating as a KPI because they can actually verify, take out the data from the platform and use it for their remediation activity. So they, they will understand that it is not just a, a opinion, this security rating. No, it is actually based on data that they will be able to use to improve their own uh, work. So that is why a security rating will help you connect the top level of your company, um, help them understand that uh, the effect of your security investments is actually paying off. This is uh, a slide, and that is uh, one of the last slides that I will uh, I will show you. That 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 actually shows the breadth of use cases that are actually interesting and possible when you apply a security rating to your own company. So on the left side, you see uh, security operations in the blue uh, arrow. And on the right side, you see uh, a more strategic end of the spectrum. So those use cases really fill out um, the complete spectrum between really tangible, practical work that starts with uh, digital footprint management, um, then getting a real good view on what is it that met exposure is on those assets. And then you, go, you will get a view on, okay, what does it mean when an external stakeholder is looking actually at this rating? So in terms of reputation management, will they be looking at a view that we actually like? Or does this not represent the way that we want companies outside of us look at our security performance? So when you've done that, you will be able then to use all the underlying data in, in, in remediation management, but you will maybe do something more important then, instead of just whacking the mole all the time when, when things start to pop up, you could also improve your processes with the data. So on a little bit more abstract level, improve your process, improve your tooling, um, train your people. And then on an even more abstract level, you could say that you can evaluate and measure um, the performance of your programs, um, the performance of your teams, and then you can all translate and abstract that data and use it in reporting to, let's say, external and internal uh, stakeholders. We see, for instance, a trend, one of our clients in, uh, in Spain is a, uh, is a bigger uh, energy grid owner. And what they do, they decided to uh, report on their security rating represented by BitSight in their annual report which they make publicly available to, uh, to everybody. So they think this transparency and being open on this is how we do on security performance is, uh, is important for them. Now, when we look at the application of um, security ratings to, to third party risk, this um, slide actually shows, let's say, a little bit the life cycle of a vendor uh, within your company. So um, the above bullet says evaluation of new vendors. So with a security rating, you will be 
easily uh, looking at an indication of the security performance and will also be able to compare that performance to other vendors that you might be thinking of also for the same service. So you will be able to validate the answers to the questionnaire. Um, which is in fact subjective, right? So uh, when you ask questions to your vendor, they will give you answers and that those answers tell you a story about where they invested in. Now, what the security rating will deliver is the external, external visible effects of those investments. So the validation of the story that the vendor tells you. And then when you go down to, let's say, investigation, um, the platform will allow you to, on a mass scale, so really um, on, on all your vendors, with a few touches on the bottom, be able to down drill on which of these parties still have, um, let's say, open port 443 or 445 open that might be related to uh, a new threat that became very actual. Um, our clients sometimes get questions from the board. Hey, Blue Keep or Orion, what about our own organization, but also what about our suppliers? That is a question that um, earlier took days or maybe even weeks to answer. Um, this information will allow you to deep dive um, really in, in, in a few minutes and get the answer uh, that fast. Maybe even more um, important then, if you go to, to the left, um, you will be able to continuously monitor the security performance in, in your business as usual operation. And you will get an alert when one of your vendors is being hit with a, with a botnet. Um, now, and a botnet infection represents a failure of an internal control. So that means the, um, the detect and respond capability of your vendor is not as you would want it to be, uh, which is in fact a risk. And now the whole vertical of, 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 of companies that are very dependent on IT have uh, very different opinions on third-party risk. But there is one aspect that everybody agrees on, that this is not something that you can solve on your own. So you need to collaborate. And that collaboration is easily facilitated um, by the BitSide platform. Um, I think that we are, are, are nearly there. Um, Christophe, do we have questions from the attendees? Yeah, so f thanks, Lionel. The, the question is linked a little bit to what we wanted to touch uh, after the presentation of, uh, let's say, um, what beside can bring to a customer, but also how it can be used. And, and uh, the context of uh, the, the SolarWinds discussion brings the, uh, the reflection to that point where why with my conventional capability, let's say uh, risk assessment, pen test and all these kind of things, I'm still missing something in order to make sure that I'm in control. Because the, the, the question that was raised was uh, a kind of, um, why that kind of approach has been used? Uh, and the question was a little bit directly uh, pointed to us on, or, or do you assist uh, what have you done in order to support your customer on that? And, and um, no. uh, so I, I will let you uh, go a little bit deeper on that because I saw that uh, SolarWind, you, you did uh, as a corporation uh, an extensive analysis of that. But my point and, and what we are seeing is that cyber criminality since beginning of the COVID has demonstrated a really change on the business model. So if you look down somewhere businesses, they started to be more aggressive. They started to set up new job position like uh, ransomware negotiators, you know, in order to make you paying. They start to harass you. Uh, we saw that uh, some of them have appointed a call center in India to call the victim in order to put pressure on them in order to pay. Uh, and, and we are seeing that ingenuity uh, start to become a key driver. 
And, and soloing for us as a professional is just an illustration of that. We used to call the technique a water hole a technique, you know, instead of going after someone, you go to a place where you know that he will come and you infect the place. And it's not you going after the victim, it's the victim coming to you, you know, and making the infection more easily. But if you look, what does it mean? It means that, uh, as I mentioned in an introduction, uh, you can monitor what you want about yourself, you can investigate your level of security, but at some moment you need to uh, trust some parties. In that case, uh, tools that you are using in order to monitor your network, uh, because it's part of your IT organization, like uh, you have to trust Excel, you have to trust Word, and all these kind of things. But what we have discovered is that this organization have been breached, and because of that, I'm victim of that breach. We, we used to saw that already in the past with uh, an action that took place about uh, uh, a common software on the, the, the Mac world uh, in order to remove malware uh, that was also infected. But we need to adapt us on that. Uh, the question was more uh, to Excelium, what have you done in order to help your customer to handle this kind of situation? I, I will say the basic principles still apply. The first one is understand what we are speaking about, because if you remember the origin of that case, everybody was smiling uh, <laughs> against FireEye. You know, the guys that were supposed to be the champion, they've been breached. But when you scratch a little bit the surface, you can see that's, uh, is, that's perhaps the best one because that was the one that I've been able to detect that something was going wrong. Uh, where an amount of, because I saw the number, I think nearly the top 500 uh, uh, in the US are using the, 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 the SolarWing tools. Um, so potentially are infected also. But it shows us that um, before reacting or overreacting, you need to understand. The second point, you need to understand what is your posture regarding that new threat. And based on that, start to have a pragmatic evaluation of how you can detect and how you can react. And, and why I think that uh, BitSide could help here also is that in the past, between an incident that happened on the market and the consequence in terms of exploitation, we were seeing several days or weeks before it happened. Now the issue is that when something happens, immediately people start to uh, use that. So it means that for cooperation, the response time between not the zero day aspect because it's still uh, conf be confident and shared only by a specific group. But when it comes to become public, your speed of reaction is really a key element. Uh, and uh, and even now, I think I saw yesterday in the news that the CEO of uh, received a postcard from uh, Russia saying uh, hello from Russia just before they investigate the case. So it means the guy said, OK, we are in, my friend. So <laughs> find us and let's play the game. So we see that uh, the bad guys are not afraid also to go after you and to start to become a little bit more visible. So. Uh, I, I will say uh, the, the key learning for me is that uh, we used to say that supply chain is a, an important element. Uh, we have seen that with more industrial players that are really dependent on the, the supply chain because the the no stock strategy. But now with this kind of things, we can say, OK, software is also part of the supply chain. And so we need to consider that. And my view is that oh, I can immediately have a feeling of the security posture of my supplier. And that's where I think a bit sight of a legitimacy in the discussion. And perhaps, Leonard, you can elaborate a little bit on that for, for the participants. Yes. Yeah, so I think um, events like, uh, like WannaCry and like BlueKeep and like uh, the SolarWinds, uh, Orion uh, hack, they, the, the, these are different events, and they have a very high impact in 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 terms of security. But and they have, I think, what they show is that we should improve as as a um, whole. So as as uh, you you could view at your company as being a team together with your vendors because you are so integrated 
at, at, at this day that when one of your vendors that are primary, so they are supporting your primary processes, when they stop, you probably stop delivering your service to your clients. So think of your supply team as your own organization. Um, and then think of, do I need maybe to change uh, anything in the way that I look at that risk and the way that I manage that risk? Because why are companies at this time investing a lot of activities in hardening their external parameter? That is because they understand the risk. They see the risk. So our clients understand that that is not where it ends, that they have vendors that should do the same. So they use the BitSide platform to facilitate that hardening, continuously look at how these vendors perform and to give them feedback. Hey, we are seeing here a few things that we are worried about and that are not in line with what we agreed upon. So can you tell me, um, so without being very punishing or something like that, they understand that they need to really collaborate and that they need to improve. And look, when you look at this slide, they need to improve the, the speed as well as the scale um, at which they are being used to managing on uh, in, that, in that supply chain. Because if you only rely on uh, on-site assessments, well, that's a super expensive, very good measurement. So you shouldn't stop doing that, but it does not allow you to scale that, right? Because an on-site assessment is just by the nature. Uh, and, and, and let me get make this really uh, uh, clear. We do not advise you to stop doing that, but an Orion um, e event shows that we need to scale up our level of, uh, of of vendor risk management. So is that is is that an answer to your question, uh, Christoph? I do think Christoph has a challenge in terms of uh, getting access to our session. Um, I I see a question from somebody who says, okay, how can I get the score of my suppliers? Now that's an interesting uh, question and I will uh, share my screen for uh, just one second. And probably you are looking now at my uh, live platform of, of BitSide. And it is really as easy as in this top left Bottom, I can, oh, my session timed out here. I'm sorry for that. But it is really as easy as logging into our platform and uh, type in the name of your service provider. In this case, we want to look at Axelium services. And then you will get a rating. And this rating will show you the, right, the top level rating, so which is, which is very high because um, anywhere between 740 and 900 we call uh, advanced, and this is a rating of 760, which is also, as you can see, on the top of the technology industry range. So this shows you that during the last 12 months, Excelium has been performing stable, uh, which also gives you a, a reassurance, right? It is not that they came from 800, dropped to 300, and then went back again up to 760. It would indicate that things are less under control than in this case, because they keep on performing at the same very high level. You will also be able to view into the 23 areas of risk that we cover. Um, and look at, for instance, how they manage their own email security, how they are able to detect any botnet infections or spam propagation that might be happening, uh, misusing uh, their own assets. So just as an indication of, um, of looking at, um, at a, uh, 
a security rating of one of your uh, one of your vendors. Um, Leonard, I was objecting, but yeah, effectively, Sylvain was asking uh, how to evaluate the different partner he has or the, the supplier he has. And, uh, so, Sylvain, if you want to have a more specific uh, uh, view on testing uh, on your case, we can also arrange uh, something with Leonard in order to give you a view on the uh, Agile partner first, you know, just to, to have a, a feeling of your rating, but also you can monitor that and handle that uh, on a, let's say, more specific view. I think we do not have any more questions, Leonard. Uh, so first time in my life that we are on time, so that's quite amazing. So, um, so, so perhaps in terms of wrap up, uh, in terms of wrap up, if I can, uh, let's say, put a word on uh, what does it mean for Excelium customer? Uh, two things. The first one is, as I mentioned, we will integrate the uh, scoring of uh, Bitside into our own solutions. So, uh, for example, the different the, the first impact will be for the security operation center customer. Uh, you will receive your scoring at least one time a year as a standard uh, practice. Uh, but we will be also to uh, uh, help you uh, with our consulting capability to implement, I will say, um, the framework inside your organization in order to leverage that scoring and partnership directly with the, the full range of uh, solution from BitSight to make that uh, a, a solution you will uh, be more benefits uh, as an organization. To give you also a way to interact perhaps a little bit more inside the organization also, because uh, as everybody knows, when the evaluation is coming from the external world, it has uh, quite often much more visibility and impact internally. So that can help you also to make things happening. Um, in any case, I hope that we will be able to have a more a physical session uh, sooner or later, um, because uh, BitSight was supposed to be part of uh, uh, a breakfast session uh, where we meet people face to face. But for sure, they will be uh, present during the, the June uh, Excelium event of Les Rencontres de la Sécurité. But as I mentioned for, for the case of um, uh, Sylvain, don't be shy, just ping us. Uh, we will be able to uh, to set up a demo and custom discussion between you, us, and BitSight uh, based on the uh, new interest. This uh, webinar will be uh, is recorded, so it will be uh, available for reviewing if you want to go into some point that we didn't uh, touch um, or that was not clear for you. Lenart, I don't know if you have a, perhaps you can uh, just present the, the I, I think it's tomorrow that you are doing a webinar on SolarWinds specifically, no? I received the invitation. Uh, I don't know if it's just for partners or for everybody, but in any case, there's the blog. I saw the blog, it's quite interesting. So perhaps if you can uh, just provide the, the link to, uh, to everybody later on, that could be, I think, helpful. And I will let you the, the last word uh, to conclude the webinar. Yes, well, uh, uh, Christoph, thank you a lot for this opportunity uh, to partner with you and um, and, and to present. Uh, and I would invite every attendee uh, who is interested to um, to reach out to your Excelium account manager um, and plan a session with us. We will be able to give you this criminal eye view on your own organization. You will get immediate insight into how have you performed the last 12 months. Um, we will be able to compare you with uh, the industry that you are uh, working in and maybe take a look at one or two of your vendors. So that will be definitely an interesting session. Um, so do not yeah, hesitate he, to do that. And, um, for are, now. Uh, Le Lenard, sorry, uh, just uh, before I, I let you, but I didn't see that uh, Johan has a question which is more related to uh, how do you price the, the solution? Can you give us a high level view uh, on the, um, the price structure and the way you package the different modules in order to give people a view on how yeah. they can also? And, and Johan, we will come back to you more practically if you want uh, later on, because um, we have also, as uh, Leonard said, as an introduction, some reflection with uh, a government or, or a regulator organization to give them the capability uh, for their own cap for an evaluation, but also to have a feeling on the market evaluation. So 
Uh, I, I know that Bitside did something with the CCB in Belgium to provide a, a kind of uh, a country level uh, of view of the level of uh, security or risk of different sector, uh, specifically in the context of the NIS directive, for example. But it could be in, uh, in Luxembourg, we are thinking about uh, uh, scoring the critical uh, fin uh, financial service provider or PSD2 provider in order also to have a sense of feeling of the uh, the, the, the yeah. level of uh, resistance of the of the country. So can, can you perhaps give a high level indication of the price structure? And uh, after that, yeah. uh, I'm taking the point to come back to you on uh, more precisely. Yeah. So <clears throat> what we provide is, ba is basically um, information. So we have two different licenses. One on license that allows you to continuously look at your own organization, have that rating, be able to compare that to different organizations, and also get out all of the data that is uh, that the rating is built from, right? So all of the records that we have on misconfigurations or, or uh, botnet infections or whatever, that information can then all be uh, withdrawn from the platform. Um, the license structure is not limited to users. So your team that is doing um, detect and respond can use it. Your team that is doing um, configuration of websites can do can use it. Your team that is looking at risk in the cloud can use it. Um, and then we have a license that allows you to continuously look at different organizations around you, like vendors or maybe in terms of benchmarking. And um, most of the times we allow you to flexibly apply those so you can change those licenses. Um, but I will be able to make it more concrete in a uh, in a one-to-one -one session because then I can show you actually uh, what your investment would look, look like. And for now, I, I really have to uh, hop off and, uh, and get on another uh, call. So uh, thank you for your attention and hope to see you uh, soon. Thank you, Leonard. Thank you all for attending this seminar. You will receive uh, uh, the replay link and we will also share with you the information links to the, the blog and, uh, for example, perhaps sharing, Leonard, an example of uh, a report so people can see the information that... Uh, uh, we can provide. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Stay safe. And uh, see you soon, I hope.